So here we are back in Breath of Fire 4, and the story is finally starting to trend in the direction of Ryu here. It was a little bit unusual that you have this main character, I mean he's a mute main character, but he's still the main character, that didn't really have anything to do with the overall story of the game. Alright. <laughs> Drop some money. But, I mean, it had to eventually go in his direction, because he is the dragon, after all. And Folu is clearly a character of importance to the overall story, and he's connected to Ryu in some way. But up until this point, everything has pretty much been Nina's story. Then it went on to being Kray's story for a little bit. M. Fen? Ah, it's a swamp. Yeah, uh, that's definitely something that I don't like about this compared to the other one. I guess it really just comes down to lucky number seven. Seven, seven, seven is Ryu's HP. <laughs> comes down to the map design in this. See, Breath of Fire 3 had a fairly unique thing where all the battles took place on your sort of normal overworld. So you had your characters walking around, and then suddenly they get caught up in a battle. And they were random encounters, but they would always appear on the... just the regular world. You wouldn't do this kind of thing where we're on a special, like, battle arena. We didn't load into a special battle arena in 3 like we did here in 4. But I guess it really comes down to their congested map design, where so many of the environments in this game here are cramped. So let's get out of this fight and take a look around. Like, look how narrow this platform we're standing on is. That's not something that uh, we could have uh, just had a fight on if... Um, Damn it, read the... Make loud noises which could frighten some of the animals in the swamp. Please try... Jeez. Some weird puddle. Puddle. Puzzle. <laughs> Get out of there! Sorry. Cat again. Oh, it's a treasure chest. How do I get down there? Ah, there's another fight. What's this dude just wandering around out here? Oh, he's watching. Patrol is watching you intently. You know, I figured him watching you would be some kind of, like, auto-counter maneuver. But he didn't... Parry. He didn't counter. Eh, well, whatever. The only two other games in this series I've really played were Breath of Fire 2 and 3. 3 I had previously done uh, an LP of. Up, oh, up, oh, there's a way down. Although I don't know if I can make it across that. Come on, Nina, why can't you fly over shit like this? <laughs> Uh, Breath of Fire 2, I've played it, but it's not something that I've gone back to a bunch of times. In fact, I'd say that I haven't actually played Breath of Fire 2 as an adult. So, I played it a long time ago, and I haven't gone back to it. And I think, pretty sure I only played it once. Played through it once. Here we are. So, my memories of the way that that game played out are quite... Let's call him Hazy. My point of bringing it up, Breath of Fire 2, up. Baby Frog! That's a fishing lure. My point of bringing up Breath of Fire 2 is to compare it to 
how unimportant uh, which which way was I supposed to go? I think maybe I should go this way. How unimportant Ryu seems to have been in the story so far in this. In Breath of Fire 2, Ryu sort of faded into the background a little bit. There was the beginning with his sister and everybody forgetting who he was. But he sort of got swept along with the story. And then he sort of uh, rose to prominence a little bit later on. Oh, it's the big snake. So he kind of... Oh, there's some sections that were repaired. <laughs> wonder if I can walk on the snake. Probably not. Probably shouldn't go that way. <laughs> this is so goofy. Snakes everywhere. Oh, it's a puzzle. Oh, damn it. And I can walk across him. Fantastic. <laughs> this is so weird. Um, there we go. Anyway, Breath of Fire 3. Um, you had your character, and he... Oh, should I get that treasure chest? But the snake's gonna move. Uh... Breath of Fire 3, your character had the beginning opening where he went on the rampage. And then, um, sort of just fell in with the storyline of the other two boys. But it wasn't, in, it wasn't really until, um, it wasn't really until Gar had mentioned something about the brood that he sort of, uh, Ryu anyway started to rise to prominence in that story. Like, it became his story at that point. But, uh... In that case, though... Even though you could say it wasn't, like, focused on him, he was still an important character in the progression of the early parts of the story. Like, when the, the kids are breaking into McNeil's mansion and all that kind of stuff. He's still involved in that story, as opposed to Ryu in this game, who I'd say was more of just an observer, rather than somebody who's involved in the story in any significant way. Oh shit, I don't think I should have done that. Well, let's go back and see if I got what I wanted to over here. There are no battles in this section. There's no, there's no fights here. I guess they don't want to distract you too much from what you have to do. Okay, I'm not going to get anywhere until there's a snake right at the end of this platform. Where does this get me? Is there anything over there that... I yep, treasure chest. Yeah, but I'm going to get stuck here. <laughs> Anyway, it ju I'm just saying it feels weird. Uh, you're going to make me do this a couple of times. <laughs> it feels weird that Ryu is here, but he has no importance really at all. Until now, they just sort of mentioned like, oh, you know what? The fact that he's a dragon might be important. Life shard. If unless I'm wrong about this, a life shard is an item that will permanently increase your HP by... Um... Permanently increase your HP by one. Does this get me anywhere? Uh. Oh, that's a way through. Oh, what's this? Do I have everything I need here? I mean, those were just random items. It looks like I have an exit out the north end here. Or, no, this is the south end. Or, rather, east end. Can't 
can't read that sign. Okay. Is that it? <laughs> yes, that's it. What do we have here? It's ten and a half minutes into this episode, so I should probably... Oh, well, there's a house here. In a town? That's some creepy-ass music. What? <laughs> oh, you married a fairy. What? I thought you married a nudist. <laughs> well, give me your shit. I'm gonna rob you. Right in front of you. Yes, the guy married a freaking fairy. Nunjimbo? Jobo? Jomo? Najomo? Well, finally somebody pointed out how unusual that was. Guy married a fairy. Anything else here? <laughs> No. <laughs> Alright. There's got to be something that we go back to. There. Oh. Some kind of encounter. It looks like we're in Windia region, though. Oh, it's the fairy. Jeez. <laughs> oh, it's not the fairy the guy married. Sure, okay. <laughs> So I got the like the fairy village building thing to do here. There was a oops wrong fucking way. <laughs> there was something like this. Oh, hold on. Let me talk to everybody first. Oh, you're saying the same shit that I'd... Oh, okay. He said the same shit. So, Breath of Fire 2 had a bit of a um, village building thing. I don't remember a lot of details about it, but it was surprisingly compl uh, complex for an SNES game. Breath of Fire 3 had what was probably a more complex one. Okay. <laughs> Where you had the fairies, and then you would set them up to um, build, clear ground, harvest crops, build, or run some kind of a shop. And running the shops is really what you want to end up having them do, but you need to let them build and clear and harvest and all that kind of stuff too. And it gave you access to shops or blacksmiths or whatever to get some really powerful items. Uh... Let's take a look. How far is what place to work at? Okay. 
not assigned any job. Empty plots. Okay, so I need... Maybe I should read the instructions. Okay, so... So each one had a strength... Okay, so I don't endurance e, e N K N and S L. I don't know what the hell those mean. Clearly, this fairy is a lot better than all the other ones. And this one's name is Lazy, so it's clearly not a good sign. And they're all zero years old. <laughs> so each one had a strength stat, like uh, stats that made them good at certain things and bad at other things. So you'd want to assign them to whatever they were best at, but I don't know what these damn stats mean. Oh shit, oh, let me... Okay, so yeah, this is nothing cleared, so... Endurance, knowledge, and style. Oh, God, that is not helping me at all. Style. Oh, okay. Alright, so it's possible to, well, in, in Breath of Fire 3 anyway, it was possible to accidentally kill your fairies by not, um, by not giving them enough food, not, not assigning enough of them to hunt, and if you didn't so assign enough of them to clear land, you'd never be able to build, and if you, it was so... So this one is knowledgeable, but doesn't have any uh, endurance or style. Now, I don't know what style is going to be used for in this context, but I got a really weak fairy clearing land. But I only have... Um, these two, I'm going to... I'm assuming that if they produce enough food, more fairies will be born. So I'm just going to let this go like this for now. Oh, all right. I guess you're poke or you're lazy or some shit. Did you know there's something on your back, Nina? Yes, she has wings. Like you do, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Why are you giving her a hard time about this? <laughs> anyway, that's probably going to have to take some time to do its thing. And we're at 19 minutes, so uh, there we go. That's the end of that episode. Next episode, we'll hit up Windia.